The administration is facing some harsh criticism, meantime, for how it has handled the situation since the quake on Friday. Japan now facing catastrophe here in the United States. We have no budget passed. Libya is on the verge of civil war. And the president chose to address equal pay in his weekly radio address. That has some of his critics asking, is there a tone deafness at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue? We understand that the president may have taped his Saturday radio address in advance, uh, which may sort of excuse the no reference to Japan, Lars, but not so much on the, on the fronts of Libya or the budget crisis or some of the other things that people are saying he needs to be taking up. Barack Obama is not just tone deaf, he has an aversion to leadership. And a lot of us have been pointing this out since the campaign. The man has never really been able to be a leader. In the Illinois Senate, he would avoid votes like the plague. He would vote present. Well, he's voting present now as president. As you pointed out, he's avoided leadership on the budget. He's avoided leadership on Libya. He certainly didn't do much of anything when they were marching in the streets of Tehran, and there were opportunities there. And he's not doing much on the Japanese quake, tsunami, and nuclear e emergency. So he has an aversion to leadership. He's more concerned with March Madness right now I think that's what we keep hearing from his critics Leslie is that it's an abdication of leadership that while we sort of are, are, are weighing in on Libya we're weighing in on Japan we're weighing in on you know the budget uh, we meaning the White House he's, he's not leading on any of these issues well, I would disagree, and Lars, you know I love you, but I think it's weak. And we even have those on the right, Megan, like Senator Luger, who say, listen, with Libya, we need to be very cautious about establishing a no-fly zone. This could result in long-term military intervention that is agreed upon by our allies throughout the world, by UN, by NATO. Our Secretary of State, Hillary Rodham Clinton, is uh, working with other world leaders regarding what to do with Libya and as well as our wonderful uh, military and our Pentagon. So I don't think the president's out of touch. I do agree it was probably recorded uh, prior. But as a woman, the fact that we're still not getting equal pay, Megan, we haven't come along long <laughs> way. We do baby. care about that. We need to address it. We, we do, do care about that. But, you know, obviously, I think even you and I can agree that, you know, what's happening in Japan right now is, is obviously a bigger Absolutely. headline than, than the equal pay issue right now. But, Lars, let me ask you this. Uh, even the West Virginia sure. Democratic senator, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin came out and Joe said, Manchin. Joe Manchin came out and said, Obama has failed to lead. He said, President Obama, quote, yep. has failed to lead in particular on this budget issue, which we're going to have much more on in our next hour. But yes, yet again today, they're going to, they're talking about whether they should pass this continuing resolution to fund the government for the next few weeks. And this is a Democrat saying, where is our leader? Joe Manchin is a good member of the Democrat Party, and he was right. It takes courage to stand up and tell a president to bell the cat, if you will, and say, Mr. President, this will only be resolved when you lead. But you see, Joe Manchin has, even though he's a Democrat, and I may disagree on other things, he has leadership qualities because he's been a leader. As a former governor, he knows what it is to lead. As an Illinois state senator, as a U.S. senator who spent most of his time running for president, President Obama does not have any leadership qualities or leadership skills. So talk all you want. Leslie, the fact is leadership is not just talking. There are lots of people who talk. To lead, you have to show people the way. And in fact, if President Obama had been doing his job, he would have said to his party last fall, you have a budget that is due on October 1st. If they had passed the budget as required by law on October the 1st, we wouldn't have all these CRs and have a government that limps along on a weekly budget, you know, going from one budget to the other. That's not leadership, and I don't think this president is leading. You tell me that his talk is leadership? I don't buy it, Go Leslie. Go ahead, Leslie. Well, Lars, what you're talking about is not a commander in chief. It's a dictator, basically telling his congressional members, especially those in his party, you know, don't, you know, do what I say or else. Bottom line here is the, these people on both sides of the aisle are $50 billion apart, okay? Who wants to cut defense? Right turns their head. Who wants to cut entitlement programs? Both sides turn their head because you know it's political suicide. Since the first of the year, we have 10,000 people a day entering into these entitlement programs for the next 19 years. The president put forth the budget. Republicans don't like it. They dog it. Even the Democrats have their own version. It is their job. If you put the president in the room, that's not going to change how far apart these two sides well, are. Well, Joe Biden He's was the one who was supposed. Joe Biden was the one who was supposed to be taking the leadership on this, and and, and then he went to Russia, and uh, you know that they, they got, he got criticized for that. But the, then the White House said, well, he made phone calls back to Washington from Russia. But let me ask you this, and then I got to wrap it up. Leslie, the, the sure. president was also criticized because, uh, and this happens with every president, and you know you can argue about whether it's valid, yes. but I want to ask you. He not only on Saturday did his, did his radio address focus on equal pay instead of any of these issues, 
he went golfing. And now today he's picking his NAACP, uh, you know, lineup. And some folks are saying, you know, look, we've got tens of thousands dead in Japan. They need our help. Yes, you've dispatched something, but set the tone. You know, do something to show the world that we're taking this seriously and, and not so much with the photo ops with the NAACP and golfing. Okay. We have sent Not money NAACP, and NCAA. <laughs> we have sent we have sent money and we have sent resources and our navy, which is the best in the world, is there. The last thing I would say is I was told God took the seventh day off. So if God gets a day <laughs> off, why not our president? <laughs> Lars, how about it? NCAA picks today? I mean, we are actually having a segment I think on you the were right. NCAA. That, that Freudian N slip whatever. was right. He, he's, I can't get he's the acronyms right with those. I know he's more concerned with those things. The fact is, is that reminding Congress of its of its legal obligation last fall is not being a dictator, Leslie. Believe me. And leadership is being able to sit down in the room with disparate parties and bring them together. This man does not have those skills, and you know it. And you have to suggest that you know he can't be a dictator. He doesn't need to be. He needs to show the country the way. That's what a real leader does. And Barack Obama is no real leader. All right, guys, I got to go. And All right, now back to my exclusive chat with the Donald, who says that the world markets prove it. This thing is bigger than Japan. Japan is really, you know, it's been a linchpin and hasn't been doing so well over the last 10 years, frankly. But it has been a strong player and a big player. And when you see what's happening and ultimately what could happen to nuclear energy in terms of a worldwide feeling is not a good thing. Are we overreacting? Germany sidelining some nuclear reactors, EU reconsidering it. Joe Lieberman in this country saying maybe take a look at new licenses. Well, when you see what's going on in Japan, certainly you can't say overreacting. But, you know, it's sort of interesting. Somebody was explaining if a plane goes down, people keep flying. If you get into an auto crash, people keep driving. There are problems in life. Not everything is so perfect. You have to look very carefully, though, at really taking care, have the best, the best people in terms of safeguards for nuclear energy. But we do need nuclear energy, and we but need a lot of it But if you're Saudi Arabia fast. or you're OPEC and you're looking at this, you're just rubbing your hands together. They are absolutely salivating. Now, who knows how long they're going to be around. I mean, they're only there because of us. It always amazes me when they raise the price. You know, they raise the price. Nobody ever talks to them. Nobody ever says, you're not going to do this. It really is. But they must. So you be, say that's them raising the price, not the markets and no, the fear No, it's not the markets. The it's OPEC. Look, I've been hearing about speculators. I know speculators. They only wish they had that kind of power. They set the price of oil. If they did it in this country, it would be called an illegal deal. It would be illegal. They go to jail. So you, you think they're these... deliberately colluding to do this? Well, of course. It's OPEC. I mean, that's what they do. But they must they 12... know from their past, Donald, if they overdo it, they can shoot themselves. Twelve guys sitting around the table, and they are having an absolute field day because we have nobody to go and call and talk and say, fellas, you're not going to do it. If you do it, you got big, big problems. They wouldn't even be there except for us, Neil. Without us, they wouldn't even exist. So what do you think they think about our reaction to go slow on drilling here? I think Even in the face of this. I think it's incredible that we're going slow on drilling. I think it's beyond anything I've ever seen that we go slow on drilling. And there are always going to be problems. You're going to have an oil spill. You're going to have a, this. You clean it up, and you'll fix it up, and it'll be fine. And people have already almost well, the Gulf forgotten. Thing is more than a little it was deal, a disaster. Though, right? It was a disaster. It got solved. But do you think without that, they would be rushing more? For no, drilling? I don't think they would. Well, I mean, so that's it's an amazing. excuse. No, I just think I don't think they would. It's incredible that we're not going. I have people in the business. I say it's almost impossible to get a permit to drill. So you can imagine how hard it is to get nuclear and other things. But they say it's almost impossible. And the Saudis, I have so many friends over on the other side. They are salivating. They can't believe that this country, if you look at certain things like natural gas, we're the Saudi Arabia times 100 of natural gas. But we don't use it. There are so many different ways beyond the nuclear. I mean, the nuclear really does have its issues, let's face it. I mean, it's not a pretty sight. When you look at Japan, you see what's going on. It does have issues. Right. You look at natural gas, we have more than anybody. We're the biggest. We don't use it. This president lately, in all seriousness, Donald, has gotten some criticism for how he has reacted and what he has done as this earthquake news has been unfolding. Now, presidents are entitled to their weekends, of course, but reports that he was golfing, going to a gridiron dinner, as we're getting more serious reports out of Tokyo. As far as the image and how it looked, it didn't look good. 
Do you think that matters? Do you think he should be more careful, look more involved, more drama from Obama? What? First of all, I love that he was golfing because I own 12 great courses. Among the but best But he wasn't courses. at any of yours. No, unfortunately. I'd love to have him in mind. In fact, I'd love to play him for the presidency. <laughs> I would play him for the presidency and for well, lots of money. You're pretty good. You're I'm, pretty I'm good. Right. So. I won many club championships. Okay. I'd love to play him. But that's not the thing. But you don't begrudge I him I love doing golf. That. And I think you should play golf. I think it's maybe the greatest game of them all. I've played everything. Baseball, have football, you played everything. Golf? I'm not into miniature really? golf. But I love golf. There's nothing more beautiful. There's nothing... There's no better game than golf. But when Japan is crashing, when you have nuclear problems, the likes of which maybe the world so far has never seen, for him to be playing golf simultaneously with that happening, you're talking about the day of and the day after, to be playing golf, I think is very inappropriate. Now, I'm not a guy that's going to say like he did where he killed Las Vegas when he said, Essentially, don't go to Las Vegas. That right, was a right. terrible statement. And they've never forgotten that in the state of no, Nevada. That was a disaster. And it really hurt Las Vegas because banks and everybody else that would go there and have big events and speeches and speak in front of, you know, thousands of people sure. about the economy, and they were afraid to go there. It was a horrible statement, and it really hurt the state of Nevada. I'm not saying anything about that. I'm saying for him to be playing golf the day of and the day after this nuclear potential catastrophe and the tsunami and the earthquake and Japan has been other than in all fairness they have been ripping us off for years dollar wise I mean with their cars and what they do you talk about trade Japan has played us for a patsy for years but still we should help in some form at least we should have a president that's sitting in the White House Talking to people over in Japan, is there anything we can do? Well, he's he done shouldn't, that. He he's should done. You not. You can walk, talk, and you at the same The time. image okay. of him on a golf course. It's not good. While Japan is in the kind of trouble, this is catastrophic trouble, I think is totally inappropriate. I say that as a person that owns some of the greatest golf courses in the world, and I love that he plays golf, and he loves golf, and I think that's fine. But for him to be playing golf at this time, I think is totally inappropriate. And later that evening, he attended a dinner with members of the mainstream Obama Mania Media. And today, the president spent his afternoon filling out uh, his NCAA brackets for ESPN. Sadly, none of this is a joke. Here with analysis on all of this, Wall Street Journal Stephen Moore, former White House press secretary, Fox News contributor Dana Perino. All right, so he's filling out brackets. He's going to fundraisers, uh, parties, and golfing. And I'm thinking Libya, the Middle East. <laughs> you know, Japan, I, I, I don't get, I, frankly, I don't get it. It is, um, his seeming passivity is either an, considered an admirable quality by some or a disturbing flaw by others. You think? And what he decides to engage on versus not engage on, it, it's, it's a moving target. It's impossible to tell what he actually wants to get across. On, on Libya, for example, they're still deliberating about a no-fly zone. I mean, at some, you're either going to try to help the rebels or you're not. Let's just decide and move on. Yeah, Steve, I, I, I find his lack of engagement now beyond troubling to me. Yeah, look, there have been three big crises in the last few months. First, we had we have the big budget crisis. We saw what happened with the president's budget. Oh. It was simply a punt. Then we had the speech the president gave last week on energy policy. I mean, we've got $100 a barrel oil now, Sean. And what did he say? More green energy, more of the same. No change in policy. And I agree with you. I think it's been kind of callous to see the president at this time of, uh, you know, an emergency around this the world is, is to be playing golf and filling out his NCAA. Two weekends in a row it's golf. He's the, the NCAA tournament picks. I'm sure they're really important for ESPN, but maybe not at this particular time. We got a nuclear crisis. We got tsunami warnings. We've got the potential people on the West Coast are scared to death that, in fact, the winds may blow it into the West Coast of the United States of America. So and he probably feels like if he succumbed to all the pressure to, to comment on everything, he wouldn't have time to even to go to the bathroom. Um, I mean, but what surprises have shoot me hoops is, or? well, shoot hoops, play golf. But the other thing is, remember, from the communication standpoint, what they've done. Today, he did three interviews with regional news outlets in key battleground states for 2012. I mean, they're starting very, very early. They still have yet, I believe, to do an interview with NHK, which is the main uh, news outlet for in, Japan. And how, right. well, how reassuring it would be for the Japanese to hear from the president right now. Another communications point, Steve, is 
in January when Representative Gabriel Giffords was shot. That morning, President Obama put out a photograph um, from him in the White House Situation Room, even after we knew mm -hmm. it was a lone gunman, I mean the Situation right. Room. And then Saturday, their only communications was a radio address on the Paycheck Fairness Act, which had obviously been taped days before and they didn't ask him to change it, and his video of him playing golf. Look but you know what concerns me about this? Okay, so we've got a, this is, this is obviously a huge setback for nuclear energy. It may have set it back for many years. But we're, I'm not we're so Sean, sure. Oh, maybe you're right. I hope you're right because I think nuclear energy is, is a pretty safe form of energy. But here's the point. If we're not going to have nuclear energy because a lot of Democrats on the Hill today said, well, that's the end of nuclear energy. And we're not going to have oil because we're not drilling. And we're not going to have coal because we're not Can't mining. Can't do that either. And we're not, you know, we're not, we have nothing. We're, natural gas they don't want. Do so either. where in the world, folks, are we going to get our, no, our we're, energy We're going to rely I mean, on the... I hope, I sincerely hope the president doesn't really believe that we can engine and power a $15 trillion industrial economy with windmills it ain't gonna happen it ain't gonna happen and you know and look at where we're relying on energy from the Middle East with That's all right. its instability from North Africa from Venezuela from Mexico but all he talks about Sean is, is clean energy well, <laughs> what's know? interesting is for years um, and Steve you and I've known this since we have go back several years right. on the energy front um, you've, we've, you've heard this phrase we're not gonna drill our way out of this crisis what's interesting is our policy in the United States is not keeping pace with technology developments yeah. and now for, in terms of natural gas there's booms all over America in places where they wouldn't weren't able to get natural gas before and now that's got the renewable energy companies nervous There's one thing we forgot he also talks about you know entitlement reform he punted on his own budget. <laughs> tell me about it you know add that to them you know the one thing that infuriates me is to, you know the budget debate is going on as we speak I mean the house passed their yeah. three-week extension today the Democrats keep saying well you only want to cut these programs what about entitlement reform and that's the mantra out of the Democrats right. Sean I've still been waiting from Harry Reid or Nancy Pelosi or Barack Obama for one entitlement reform that will save money oh. and the silence has been deafening yeah it's really amazing uh, remember he voted present most of his years <laughs> in in Illinois guys thanks for being with us thanks, Sean. and coming up the dramatic before and after